Hey, what's up and welcome to the first tutorial of TerraBrush. So for the past few months now, I've been building this map editor plugin for Godot that I was using for my own project. And I got a lot of requests from other developers to know if they could use it in their own project as well. I decided that I wanted to make this project open source so everyone can use it. Although keep in mind that this project has been made for my own game and it suits my needs. But if it can help another person, I'm going to be happy about it. On that note, it's time to get started. The first thing to do is to create a new project and make sure to have the .NET version of Godot because my plugin has been made with C Sharp. I'm gonna leave the default options for the rest of the project and here we are in Godot. Next, we're gonna need to grab the plugin itself. So go ahead and go to my repository on GitHub and you're gonna be able to either clone the repository or download a zip file. From that archive, just drag the add-ons folder to your project and that's it for this archive. All right, cool. Next, so we're gonna make sure that our project can run C Sharp. So we're going to go ahead under tools, C Sharp and create a C Sharp solution. So really close to our play button, there is now a build button. You're going to press it. So it builds a solution that allows us to enable the plugin itself. Next, you're going to go under project settings and then plugins and you're going to see TerraBrush. You just need to enable the checkbox here and now the plugin is active. Perfect. So now let's create a new scene. This new scene is going to get called demo and we're going to add a new node. This new node will be under node 3D. And if you scroll down, you're gonna see TerraBrush just like this. You can add it to the scene and you will see the basic settings for this node. You can leave it like this and you can add the create terrain button. That's it, we have our terrain. Well, that's the end. Nah, I'm kidding. Of course, there is a lot more you can do. So if you go under your project settings under general and you enable the advanced settings, there are some settings for TerraBrush. For example, here, the color of the brush you're gonna use while painting. If you change it, just make sure to select another node and get back to TerraBrush so it applies the color. All right, so I wanna talk about the shortcuts for the plugin. So there are a lot. The first one you wanna use is the G button that allows you to change the brush size. If you look at the right, you will see that when you change it using this shortcut, it will change it as well on the right. The other one is H button. This will change the brush strength. Next, the V button will open a pie menu with all the tools. I think this is really convenient and you see that it changes as well on the right side. The next one is the B button that allows you to change the brush itself. So here you can see that I can paint some patches instead of having the small dot. That's about it for now. All right, that being said, with the first tool, you can now sculpt your terrain just like that. So that helps you increase the height of the terrain. If you press shift while painting, that will start to smooth the terrain instead of increasing it. Here you can see that the smooth option was pretty aggressive. If you change the brush strength using the H button, you're going to be able to smooth it a little bit less. So this allows you to have more control over what you're doing. The shift option almost always reverse the option. So for example, when you add foliage, the shift option will remove foliage. When you add packet scenes, it will remove packet scenes while holding shift. So this really serves to the other option. The only one that is different is the sculpt one that switch over to the smooth option because I think this is more convenient. All right, so let's add some texture to our terrain. So the website I like to use is this one. I'm gonna pick some random texture here so we can have a result, but feel free to use the one you like. I'm gonna grab my texture and drag them over to my texture folder. And I'm gonna go over the texture sections on the right and then I'm gonna add a texture set. A texture set usually holds multiple textures so I'm gonna add a texture set resource here and I'm gonna just drag my color texture for example here in, under the albedo. What happens when I drag over the albedo color you're gonna see that the normal and the roughness gets filled out if the naming is correct for what I decided. All right, let's do the same thing for all the rest of the textures. You're gonna see that I'm gonna press the update button terrain here. This update terrain basically refresh the shaders and stuff. So when you do a modification, you usually need to press this button to make sure that everything has been refreshed. 
and you're gonna see that right now our terrain is all black and why is that we already set some textures right when i dragged over my texture on the scene Godot decided to change the format of the texture and for it to work you're gonna need to make sure that all the textures for the terrain has the exact same format so it includes the compression mode but also the map maps and everything and if you update the terrain again that works all right let's take our paint texture tool so here i'm gonna show you a new shortcut the n option this allows you to show the current tool options so for example here it's going to show the textures so if i paint with it i'm going to see some sand and i can also paint the rock and everything else and i can also reduce the brush strength this will make the texture merge with the texture below i can also change the brush so this way i can for example paint some patches on the ground Hey, that's awesome. I can do a lot of stuff with just this that already starts to look like something cool. Like here, I created a small mountain setup with the rock and the snow. All right, so next I went to Kenny's website and thank you, Kenny's. It's so cool to have all these resources available. You're awesome. I downloaded this foliage pack that I've put inside of the project under my folder. And then I created a foliage on the right. You see that I create a foliage resource and then I create a foliage definition. In this foliage, I'm going to put a mesh and I'm going to use a quad mesh here for the blade and I'm gonna change the center offset so it starts at the bottom of the mesh and I'm gonna also create a material for this mesh where I'm gonna go and drag the image for the foliage under the texture make sure to hit the update terrain button and then we're gonna switch over to the foliage tool just like this we paint ugly foliage so let's enable the transparency for the material and also disable the cool mode so we see every face of the quad mesh. One thing that I also like to do is use as albedo under vertex color. This makes the foliage try to match the color of the ground. I would also like to have some thick grass here so I'm gonna increase the mesh scale and update the terrain way better you can also increase the editor maximum rendering distance for example here it's 100 meters so it allows you to see the grass from far away this of course reduce the performance but when you edit I think it's fine all right the next thing is to have packet scenes so I went back to Kenny's website and I picked up the nature kit I dragged all the models into Godot and I just changed the rule scale to re-import it like this because I know that these models are a little bit small for our terrain. I go on the right and I add a objects like for the foliage I add a definition and I just drag the object scenes like this you can drag several packet scenes at the same time that's fine i'm going to change a little bit the random range so it's a little bit more random and i'm going to reduce the default object frequency so it's a little bit more thick here i'm going to also enable the random y rotation so all my objects are not in the same rotation i'm going to update the terrain again and just like this i should be able to paint all my packet scenes on the terrain awesome i think this is a really useful option instead of having to place all the trees myself one by one i like it all right next we're gonna add water to our terrain i'm gonna go on the right and add a water resource and i'm gonna change the color it's fine for now let's update the terrain and paint some water that's awesome i've included a lot more options for you to modify the aspect of the water but just setting the color like this works and i think it's good looking enough for at least this demonstration but you can play with it and see how it behaves all right cool so let's do some text snow now and for this i'm gonna create a snow resource on the right and i'm gonna put my snow resource that i had previously make sure you don't modify your compression mode here to make sure that your terrain is still working and for the rest i'm gonna put the normal texture i'm gonna also put the roughness and a noise texture to make the snow a little bit more random and just like this you can paint thick snow awesome as you can see it goes over the trees a 
little bit. This is how we want it to behave. There is a way also to make it interact with the player, but this is for another time. Another thing I can suggest is that you play with a word environment like this because it changes the scene entirely. So for example, here we now have shadows for the trees and stuff like that. This is really better looking here. Of course, you can do much more with the tool, but I think that for a first video, it's enough. All right, I'm gonna let you play with the tool and if you use it and you make a project with it, let me know. I wanna see what you create with it. All right, that's it folks. We're gonna see each other on the next one.